Welcome to Module 9. The aim of this module is to offer an overview of IMO's governance structure and decision-making processes, as well as the international shipping regulations. The module also deals with the roles and responsibilities of flag states and port state control, and the many IMO conventions that are a major part of maritime affairs. The module highlights the International Convention for the Prevention of Operational or Accidental Pollution of the Marine Environment from Ships, also known as MAPO. Upon completion of this module, you will be able to do the following. Identify the IMO governance structure. Discuss the different IMO regulations for international shipping. Discuss the different roles and responsibilities of administrators. Discuss the different IMO conventions for the prevention of pollution from ships. Discuss the role and activities of the Integrated Technical Cooperation Programme. A number of topics are covered in this module. They include an introduction to IMO, the structure and decision-making processes, regulations of international shipping, the roles and responsibilities of administrations, a brief overview of MARPOL annexes, the Technical Cooperation and Capacity Building Program. Today, around 90% of world trade is carried by the international shipping industry. Without shipping, the import and export of goods on the scale necessary to sustain the modern world would not be possible. There are more than 50,000 merchant ships trading internationally and they transport every kind of cargo. The world fleet is registered in over 150 nations and manned by more than a million seafarers. World merchandise trade volumes expanded by 2.2% in 2013 to 9.5 billion tonnes. The SOLAS Convention in its successive forms is generally regarded as the most important of all international treaties concerning the safety of merchant ships. The first version was adopted in 1914 in response to the Titanic disaster, the second in 1929, the third in 1948, and the fourth in 1960. The 1974 version includes the tacit acceptance procedure, and this provides that an amendment shall enter into force on a specified date unless, before that date, objections to the amendment are received from an agreed number of parties. As a result, the 1974 Convention has been updated and amended on numerous occasions. The Convention in force today is sometimes referred to as SOLAS 1974 as amended. The International Maritime Organization, or IMO. As a specialised agency of the United Nations, IMO is the global standard setting authority for the safety, security and environmental performance of international shipping. The role of the IMO is to create a regulatory framework for the shipping industry that is fair and effective, universally adopted and universally implemented. The role of the IMO is to create a level playing field so that ship operators cannot address their financial issues by simply cutting corners and compromising on safety, security and environmental performance. This approach also encourages innovation and efficiency. Conventions form a major part of maritime affairs that are governed by the IMO. Some of the major conventions of IMO are the Safety of Life at Sea or SOLAS 1974 Convention, and the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships, or MARPOL. The IMO conventions provide machinery for cooperation among governments in the field of governmental regulation and practices relating to technical matters of all kinds that affect shipping engaged in international trade. The conventions encourage and facilitate the general adoption of the highest practicable standards in matters concerning maritime safety, efficiency of navigation and prevention and control of marine pollution from ships. Conventions also deal with administrative and legal matters related to the purposes set out in this article. Each member state that desires to be part of the IMO 
must accept the details mentioned in conventions proposed by IMO and agree to international supervision required under all such conventions. Such conventions act as treaties between the IMO and member states. Every member state needs to abide by the rules and regulations that are put forward by the IMO. The IMO is the structure. The organization consists of the following. An assembly, a council, and five main committees. These committees are the Maritime Safety Committee, the Marine Environment Protection Committee, the Legal Committee, the Technical Cooperation Committee, and the Facilitation Committee. There are also a number of subcommittees that support the work of the main technical committees. The functions, roles and responsibilities of each section will now be discussed. 1. The Assembly. The Assembly consists of all Member States. It is responsible for approving the work programme, voting the budget and determining the financial arrangements of the organisation. 2. The Council. The Council is elected by the Assembly for two-year terms beginning after each regular session of the Assembly. It is responsible under the Assembly for supervising the work of the organisation. Between sessions of the Assembly, the Council performs all the functions of the Assembly except the function of making recommendations to governments on maritime safety and pollution prevention, which is reserved for the Assembly by Article 150 of the Convention. 3. The MSC or Maritime Safety Committee. This committee is the highest technical body of the organisation. It consists of all member states. The functions of the MSC are to, to consider any matter within the scope of the organisation concerned with aids to navigation, construction and equipment of vessels, manning from a safety standpoint, rules for the prevention of collisions, handling of dangerous cargoes, maritime safety procedures and requirements, hydrographic information, log books and navigational records, marine casualty investigation, salvage and rescue, and any other matters directly affecting maritime safety. It also has responsibility for considering and submitting recommendations and guidelines on safety for possible adoption by the Assembly. The expanded MSC adopts amendments to conventions such as SOLAS and includes all member states, as well as those countries which are party to conventions such as SOLAS, even if they are not IMO member states. Four. The MEPC is empowered to consider any matter within the scope of the organisation that is concerned with prevention and control of pollution from ships. In particular, this committee is concerned with the adoption and amendment of conventions and other regulations and measures to ensure their enforcement. The MEPC was first established as a subsidiary body of the Assembly and raised to full constitutional status in 1985. Number five, the Legal Committee. This committee is empowered to deal with any legal matters within the scope of the organisation. The committee consists of all member states of IMO. It was established in 1967 as a subsidiary body to deal with legal questions which arose in the aftermath of the Torrey Canyon disaster. The Facilitation Committee, number six, was established as a subsidiary body of the Council in May 1972 and became fully institutionalised in December 2008 as a result of an amendment to the IMO Convention. This committee consists of all the member states of the organisation and deals with IMO's work in eliminating unnecessary formalities and red tape in international shipping by implementing all aspects of the Convention on Facilitation of International Maritime Traffic 1965 and any matter within the scope of the organisation that is concerned with the facilitation of international maritime traffic. In particular, in recent years, the Committee's work, in accordance with the wishes of the Assembly, has been to ensure that the right balance is struck between maritime security and the facilitation of international maritime trade. 7. The Technical Cooperation Committee. This committee 
is required to consider any matter within the scope of the organization that is concerned with the implementation of technical cooperation projects for which the organization acts as the executing or cooperating agent and any other matters related to the organization and activities in the technical cooperation field. The Technical Cooperation Committee consists of all member states of IMO. It was established in 1969 as a subsidiary body of the Council and was institutionalized by means of an amendment to the IMO Convention, which entered into force in 1984. There are also subcommittees. These are, in, are the MAC and MPC, are assisted in their work by a number of subcommittees, which are also open to all member states. Human Element Training and Watchkeeping, the HTW, the Implementation of IMO Instruments, III, Navigation, Communications and Search and Rescue, NCSR, Pollution Prevention and Response, PAPR, Ship Design and Construction, SDC, Ship Systems and Equipment, SSE, and Carriage of Cargoes and Containers, CCC. There were seven main agenda items for the MEPC 74. Number one, the adoption of amendments to IMO mandatory instruments, MARPOL amendments related to the use of electronic record books. MARPOL amendments to allow for electronic record books to be used were adopted for Annex 1, Oil Record Book Part 1, Machinery Space Operations, and Oil Record Book Part 2, Cargo Ballast Operations, Annex 2, Cargo Record Book, and Annex 5, Garbage Record Book, and Annex 6, for records relating to Regulation 12, Ozone Depleting Substances, Regulation 13, Nitrogen Oxides, and Regulation 14, Sulphur Oxides, and Particulate Matter. The expected entry into force date is the 1st of October, 2020. The MEPC also adopted related guidelines for the use of electronic record books under MARPOL. MARPOL amendments, these relate to cargo residues and tank washing of persistent floating NOx substances. MEPC adopted amendments to MARPOL Annex 2 to strengthen and specified sea areas, discharge requirements for cargo residues and tank washings that contain persistent floating products with a high viscosity and or a high melting point that can solidify under certain conditions, such as certain vegetable oils and paraffin-like cargoes. And this followed concerns about the environmental impact of permissible discharges. The amendments add new paragraphs to Mark Paul Annex 2, Regulation 13, which concerns the control of discharge of residue of noxious liquid substances to require pre-wash and discharge a residue water mixture generated during the pre-wash to a reception facility for specific products in specified areas. These areas are Northwestern European waters, Baltic areas, Western European waters, and Norwegian Sea. The expected entry into force date is the 1st of January, 2021. MARPOL amendments concerning the EEDI regulations for ice strength in ships. Other amendments to MARPOL Annex 6 were adopted relating to the Energy Efficiency Design Index regulations for ice strengthened ships, replacing the words cargo ships having ice breaking capability with Category A ships as defined in the Polar Code. Expected entry into force date is the 1st of October 2020. Amendments to Mandatory Codes. The IBC Code Amendments, the MEPC adopted amendments to the International Code for the construction and equipment of ships carrying dangerous chemicals in bulk, including the revised Chapter 17, the Summary of Minimum Requirements, 18, the list of products to which the code does not apply, 19, the index of products carried in bulk, and 21, the criteria for signing carriage requirements for products subject to the IBC Code. Consequential amendments to the code for the construction and equipment of ships carrying dangerous chemicals in bulk were also adopted. The expected entry into force date is the 1st of January, 2021. NOx Technical Code 2008 amendments, 
The amendments relate to the use of electronic record books and certification requirements for selective catalytic reduction systems, MEC, also adopted a related MEPC resolution on amendments to the 2017 guidelines addressing additional aspects of the NOx Technical Code 2008 with regard to particular requirements that relate to marine dental engines that are fitted with selective catalytic reduction systems. The expected entry into force date is the 1st of October 2020. Number two. This point concerns the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions from ships. The MEPC pushed forward with a number of measures that are aimed at supporting the achievement of the objectives that were set out in the initial IMO strategy on the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions from ships. In line with the Paris Agreement under UNFCCC and the United Nations 2030 Agenda, for sustainable development. In line with this, the MEPC approved amendments to strengthen existing mandatory requirements for new ships to be more energy efficient, initiated the fourth IMO GHG study, adopted a resolution encouraging cooperation with ports to reduce emission from shipping, approved a procedure for the impact assessment of new measures proposed, agreed to establish a multi-donor trust fund for GHG, and agreed terms of reference for the 6th and 7th intersessional working groups to be held in November 2019 and March 2020 in order to expedite the work. Further work on energy efficiency of ships or EEDI review. The MEPC also approved for adoption at the next session in April 2020 amendments to MARPOL Annex 6 to significantly strengthen the energy efficiency design index phase three requirements. Number three involves implementation of the sulfur 2020 limit. The MEC approved and adopted a comprehensive set of guidance and guidelines to support the consistent implementation of the lower 0.50% limit on sulfur in the ship's fuel oil, which will enter into effect from the 1st of January 2020. The 2019 guidelines on consistent implementation of 0.50% sulphur limit under MARPOL Annex 6 was also adopted by Resolution MEPC 320 or number 74. These comprehensive guidelines include a template for a fuel oil non-availability report and a technical review of identified possible potential safety applications associated with the use of 2020 compliant fuels. Number four relates to the Marine Plastic Litter Action Plan. In this instance, MEPC approved the terms of reference for an IOMO study on marine plastic litter from ships to focus on information on the contribution of all ships to marine plastic litter and information of storage, delivery and reception of plastic waste from and collected by ships. It was noted the joint group of experts on the scientific aspects of marine environmental protection or GESAMP had established a working group on sea-based sources of marine litter, GESAMP working group 43. This group would enter earlier, review and provide an analysis of the existing body of knowledge on marine plastic litter from all sea-based sources and an assessment of data gaps. They invited GESAMP to provide a report to MEPC 75 on the work of GESAMP Working Group 43 together with a presentation. Developed a regulatory framework matrix to identify all international regulatory instruments and best practices associated with the issue of marine plastic litter from ships. Approved the scope of work for the Subcommittee on Pollution Prevention and Response in relation to actions of the Action Plan to address marine plastic litter from ships, Resolution MEPC 3174, that has been categorized as short term, including facilitating and enhancing reporting of the accidental loss or discharge of fishing gear. 
invited the Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO, to make information on fishing gear marking and logging schemes available to MECPC and or to the GESAMP Working Group 43. A correspondence group was established to finalize a draft strategy to address marine plastic litter from ships based on discussions during MEPC 74 and report to MEPC 75. In the meantime, Norway announced its intention to support a proposed IMO FAO Norway GLO litter project to support the IMO action plan. This project would also see the institution of an award to honour the contributions made by Ms. Joanna Toole, who lost her life in an air accident in March 2019. Number five concerned ballast water management convention implementation. The International Convention for the Control and Management of Ships, Ballast Water and Sediments 2004 BWM Convention entered into force in September 2017 and has, to date, been ratified by 81 countries that represent 80.76% of world merchant shipping tonnage. The main focus for the Convention now is on its effective and uniform implementation and on an experience building phase. This latter phase will focus on gathering data on the application of the BWM Treaty. The MEPC approved BWM 2 Circ 67 Rev 1 on the revised data gathering and analysis plan for the experience building phase associated with the BWN Convention to incorporate a link to standard operating procedures. The MEPC approved amendments to the BWN Convention that concern commissioning testing of ballast water management systems and the form of the International Ballast Water Management Certificate. Number six concerns the approval of guidance and other matters. Among other matters, the MEPC also approved four circulars that contain new or updated guidance that are relevant to the assessment and carriage of chemicals in bulk, including the revised MEP circular on the guidelines for the provisional assessment of liquid substances transported in bulk. It approved the methodology to analyze the impact of a ban on the use and carriage of heavy fuel oil as fuel in Arctic waters, approved the guide on practical implementation of the Pollution Prevention and Response Treaties, referred back to the PPR Subcommittee draft amendments to the International Convention for the Control of Harmful Anti-Filing Systems on Ships for finalization for future adoption to include new controls on the biocide Cybertrain. Number seven, technical operation and capacity building. In order to implement IMO's environment related instruments, technical operation and capacity building activities play a very important role at IMO. The MEPC agreed to establish a voluntary multi donor trust fund to provide a dedicated source of financial support for technical cooperation and capacity building activities that support the implementation of the initial IMO strategy on reduction of GHG emissions from ships. The IMO Norway Green Voyage 2050 project was launched on the 13th of May to respond to the need to provide technical assistance to states and to support technology transfer and promote green technology uptake to improve energy efficiency and reduce GHD emissions throughout the maritime sector. The International Maritime Organization consists of the following. An assembly, a council, and five main committees. The committees are the Maritime Safety Committee, the Marine Environment Protection Committee, the Legal Committee, the Technical Cooperation Committee and the Facilitation Committee. Additionally, a number of subcommittees support the work of the main technical committees. Details of these different bodies are given below. The Assembly. The Assembly is the highest governing body of the organization. It consists of all member states. It meets once every two years in regular sessions. It is responsible for approving work program and determining financial arrangements. 
It elects the council members. A council. A council consists of 40 member states which serve a term of two years. It is the executive organ of the IMO. It is responsible under the assembly for supervising the IMO's work. It coordinates the activities of the IMO organs. It considers IMO draft work program and budget estimates and then submits them to the assembly. It receives reports, proposals of committees and submits to assembly with comments and recommendations as appropriate. Appoints the secretary general subject to the approval of the assembly. Membership of the council. The Assembly of the International Maritime Organization elected the following states to be members of its council for the 2016 to 2017 biennium. They are Category A, the 10 states with the largest interest in providing international shipping services. These states are China, Greece, Italy, Japan, Norway, Panama, the Republic of Korea, the Russian Federation, United Kingdom, United States. Category B, 10 other states with the largest interest in international seaborne trade. These are Argentina, Bangladesh, Brazil, Canada, France, Germany, India, Netherlands, Spain, and Sweden. Category C, these are 20 states that have not been elected under A or B, which have special interest in maritime transport or navigation, and whose election to the council will ensure representation of all the major geographic areas of the world. These are Australia, the Bahamas, Belgium, Chile, Cyprus, Denmark, Egypt, Indonesia, Kenya, Liberia, Malaysia, Malta, Mexico, Morocco, Peru, Philippines, Singapore, South Africa, Thailand, and Turkey. The IMO is a UN specialized agency which has oversight over shipping and maritime affairs. The uniquely global qualities of the maritime industry have conferred a special role on the IMO. The chief task of this organization has been to provide an international way of promoting safety at sea through the development of a comprehensive regulatory framework. The mission of the IMO today includes safety, environmental concerns, legal matters, technical cooperation, maritime security, and the efficiency of shipping. The IMO permits participation from numerous organizations. These include representatives from the UN and its specialized agencies, e.g. the ILO, the WTO, and the UNFCC, observers from intergovernmental organizations, e.g. IHO, EC, and observers from non-governmental organizations in the consultative status, such as ISO, IACS, and ICS. The current secretary for the organization is Katak Lim from the Republic of Korea. He is the eighth elected secretary general of the International Maritime Organization. Mr. Lim, was elected by the 114th session of the IMO Council in June 2015 for a four-year period, with his official duties beginning on the 1st of January 2016. The selection was endorsed by the IMO's Assembly at its 29th session in November 2015. The IMO secures financial, human and logistical support for its technical assistance activities from a wide variety of sources. Funding sources include the IMO's Technical Cooperation Fund, multi-donor trust funds are established to encourage contributions that are targeted on specific issues and are used to support technical cooperation programs which address these issues. Bilateral arrangements are included with governments and organizations to provide financial and in-kind support for specific programs. Other funding sources are one-off cash donations, membership charges. This is because member states pay charges based on registered tonnage. Um, as a note, the top three contributors for 2014 were Panama, Liberia, and the Marshall Islands. Voluntary contributions from member states, governmental agencies, 
intergovernmental bodies and other public and private and non-governmental sources. Some projects are funded by the UN or its specialized agencies, e.g. UNDP. It is essential that regulations concerning shipping are developed because shipping is inherently international. It is vital that shipping is subject to uniform regulations on matters such as construction standards, navigational rules, and standards of crew competence. An alternative would be a plethora of conflicting national regulations resulting in commercial distortion and administrative confusion, which would in turn compromise the efficiency of world trade as an international trading activity. UNCLOS ART 211 declares, States acting through the competent international organization or general diplomatic conference shall establish international rules and standards to prevent, reduce, and control pollution of the marine environment from vessels. The IMO is a forum of maritime administrators for the formulation of mandatory instruments and guidelines to establish common rules for safety and environmental regulation. Rulemaking. Any proposal for amendment to existing rules or introduction of new rules has to be backed up by demonstrating a compulsive need to consider the proposal. The proposal, if it is found appropriate after consideration by member states, would be subjected to further processes. Best efforts are always made to reach decisions by consent. Good prevention initiatives can go a long way to reduce the risk of pollution from ships. However, in spite of the best efforts, spills will inevitably occur. When these spills happen, it is necessary to ensure that effective preparedness measures are in place to enable a timely and coordinated response that can limit the adverse consequences of pollution incidents involving oil, hazardous and noxious substances. The International Convention on Oil Pollution Preparedness, Response and Cooperation of 1990 is the international instrument that provides a framework which is designed to facilitate international cooperation and mutual assistance, both in preparing for and responding to major oil pollution incidents. It requires states to plan and prepare by developing national systems for pollution response in their respective countries and by maintaining adequate capacity and resources to address oil pollution emergency. States which are party to OPRC 90 and OPRC h &S protocol are required to establish a national system for responding to oil and h &S pollution incidents, including a designated national authority, a national operational contact point, and a national contingency plan. These need to be backed up by a minimum level of response equipment, communications plans, and regular training and exercises. For pollution control, there's MARPOL 2. This provides rules for the prevention of pollution caused by noxious liquid substances that are carried in bulk. Annex 6 limits the main air pollutants contained in ship's exhaust gas, including sulfur oxides and nitrous oxide. It also prohibits the deliberate emission of ozone depleting substances. MARPOL Annex 6 also regulates shipboard incineration and the emissions of volatile organic compounds from tankers. The new chapter of MARPO Annex 6 is a package of mandatory technical and operational measures to reduce GHG emissions from international shipping. The aim is to improve the energy efficiency for new ships through improved design and propulsion technologies and for all ships, both new and existing, primarily through improved operational practices. The Hong Kong Convention for the safe and environmentally sound recycling of ships was adopted by IMO in May 2009. The London Convention for the Prevention of Marine Pollution by Dumping of Waste and Other Matters of 1972 was one of the first global conventions to protect the marine environment from human activities and has been in force since 1975. Its objective is to promote the effective control of all sources of marine pollution and take all practicable steps to prevent pollution of the sea by the dumping of wastes. Currently, 
87 states are parties to this convention. With regard to safety, there's the safety of life at sea, this, or SOLAS, the Safety of Life at Sea, or SOLAS Convention, mainly deals with the construction and safety equipment of merchant ships. The first version of the treaty was passed in 1914 in response to the sinking of the RMS Titanic. Newer versions were adopted in 1929, 1948, 1960, and 1974. The 1960 Convention, which was activated in 1965, was the first major achievement for the International Maritime Organization. The latest convention, 1974, includes the tacit acceptance procedure, whereby amendments enter into force by default unless nations file objections. The International Convention on Standards of Training, Certification and Watchkeeping for Seafarers of 1978 as amended sets the minimum qualification standards for masters, officers, and watch personnel. It entered into force in 1984. The convention was significantly amended in 1994. These amendments took effect on 31st of July, 2002. STCW is currently undergoing a major review. In terms of compensation, there's the Civil Liability and the Associated International Oil Pollution Compensation Fund Convention. Universal Conventions, Vienna, Montreal, Stockholm, UNFCC, and so forth. The flag state is responsible for the implementation of IMO legislation into their national legislation and enforcement. Flag states have a range of responsibilities. These include the registration of ships, setting maritime safety, security, and environmental protection standards, maritime training and certification of seafarers, ship inspection survey and certification, regulation of shipping, that is, construction equipment, navigation, loading, and so forth. UNCLOS Article 217, which concerns the responsibilities of flag states, declares that states shall ensure its vessels comply with international rules and standards. States must take measures to ensure that its vessels are prohibited from sailing if they are not in compliance. States must ensure that its ships carry appropriate certification. States need to ensure that its vessels are regularly inspected and surveyed. States shall undertake investigation proceedings for alleged violations. States may request assistance of other states with the investigation of violation. States shall apply penalties which are adequate in order to discourage violations. A flag state may delegate authority to an organization recognized as complying with the provisions of this code to perform on its behalf statutory certification and services under mandatory IMO instruments and its national legislation. Administrations or authorized recognized organizations on their behalf implement IMO conventions and codes through surveys and certification. The IMO has developed guidelines for the authorization of organizations acting on behalf of the administration. The port state is any state with an international port. For example, a ship is registered in Samoa and is in the port of Cook Islands. In this example, Samoa is the flag state and the Cook Islands is the port state. Port state control involves the inspection of foreign ships in national ports to verify that the condition of the ship and its equipment comply with the requirements of international regulation and that the ship is manned and operated in compliance with these rules. Port state also has a role in relation to reception facilities and other port state activities. Port state control involves the inspection of foreign ships in national ports to verify the condition of ships and their equipment to comply with the requirements of international regulations and to assure that ships are manned and operated in compliance with these rules. The condition of a ship and its equipment need to comply with the requirements of international conventions. Port state control is also responsible for keeping a register of fuel oil suppliers. Many IMO conventions include provisions that give rights to undertake PSC. These include MARPOL Articles 5 and 6, SOLAS, 
SGCW, CORREGS, load lines and tonnage measurement. PSC is generally limited to verifying the validity of certificates. To conduct a more detailed inspection of a vessel, there must be clear grounds for believing that the vessel condition does not substantially correspond with its certificates. If deficiencies are found that render the vessel unworthy, the vessel may be detained until deficiencies are corrected. The PSC officer, when exercising control, should not unduly detain the vessel. The port state must be a party to the relevant convention to carry out an inspection if a ship is detained. If a ship is detained, the flag state must be notified. IOMA guidance is provided in Procedures for Port State Control 2011. There are nine regional agreements on port state control. These memoranda of understanding or MOUs are Europe and the North Atlantic, the Paris MOU, Asia and the Pacific, the Tokyo MOU, Latin America, Asciuto de Vina de Mer, the Caribbean, the Caribbean MOU, the Western Central Africa, Abuja MOU, the Black Sea region, Black Sea MOU, the Mediterranean, Mediterranean MOU, the Indian Ocean, Indian Ocean MOU, and the Riyadh MOU. The United States Coast Guard maintained the 10th PSC regime. The IMO has recognized that concerted efforts can best be made at a regional level to do the following. Improve harmonization, achieve global coordination of PSC functions, establish regional PSC regimes promoted by A68217. There are numerous advantages of the Memoranda of Understanding. These include a more effective sharing of information, extended control of ships while trading in the region, harmonized system of inspection and surveys that will be easier to attain, better cost benefit, unfair competition between ports in the region is avoided, global cooperation through interregional cooperation, deterrent effect for substandard ships. Five of the six MARPOL annexes have regulations that require the provision of reception facilities. Responsibilities and powers should be provided for the competent entity to do the following. Provide reception facilities for ships in port or terminal, inside and outside port. Inform ships to use the facilities. Ensure port, terminals, shipyards or provide adequate facilities. Set penalties for non The administrations of parties are required to make notifications to IMO. For example, under MARPOL Annex 6, parties are required to notify IMO on Equivalence, Regulation 4, PSC Deficiency, Regulation 10, Inadequacy of Reception Facilities, Regulation 17.3, Tanker Vapour Capture Systems, Regulation 15, Non-Compliant Fuel Oil Supply, Regulation 18.9.6, Application of EEDI Waiver, Regulation 19.9. The primary responsibility for ensuring vessel compliance with IMO conventions lies with the flag state and ship owners or operators. Port State Control provides a safety net through spot checks on quality assurance standing. UNCLOS provides many rights to states, flag, port, coastal, but also responsibilities. The environmental impact of shipping includes air pollution, marine pollution, acoustic and oil pollution. Ships are responsible for more than 18% of some air pollutants. These also include greenhouse gas emissions. The IMO estimates that carbon dioxide emissions from shipping were equal to 2.2% of the global human-made emissions in 2012 and expects them to rise 50 to 250% by 2050 if no action is taken. MARPOL is the main international convention that covers the prevention of operational or accidental pollution of the marine environment by ships. There are a number of annexes. Annex 1 sets out the regulations for the prevention of pollution by oil, entered into force on 2nd of October 1983. Annex 1 
covers the prevention of pollution by oil from operational measures as well as from accidental discharge. The 1992 amendments to Annex 1 made it mandatory for new oil tankers to have double hulls and brought in a phase and schedule for existing tankers to fit double hulls, which was subsidized in 2001 and 2003. Annex 2 sets out the regulations for the control of pollution by noxious liquid substances in bulk. This came into force on the 2nd of October 1983. This annex details the discharge criteria and measures for the control of pollution by noxious liquid substances carried in bulk. Some 250 substances were evaluated and included in the list appended to this convention. The discharge of the residue is allowed only to reception facilities until certain concentrations and conditions, which vary with the category of substances, are complied with. In any case, no discharge of residue containing noxious substances is permitted within 12 miles of the nearest land. Annex 3 sets out the prevention of pollution by harmful substances carried by sea in packaged form, this was entered into force on the 1st of July, 1992. Annex 3 contains general requirements for the issuing of detailed standards on packing, marking, labeling, documentation, storage, quantity limitations, exceptions, and notifications. For the purpose of this annex, harmful substances are those substances which are identified as marine pollutants in the International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code or which meet the criteria in the appendices of Annex 3. Annex 4, Prevention of Pollution by Sewerage from Ships, entered into force 27 September 2003. This contains requirements to control pollution of the sea by sewerage. The discharge of sewerage into the sea is prohibited, except when the ship has in operation an approved sewerage treatment plant, or when the ship is discharging disinfected sewerage using an approved system at a distance of no more than three nautical miles from the nearest land. Sewage, which is not comminuted or disinfected, has to be discharged at a distance of more than 12 nautical miles from the nearest land. Annex 5 sets out the prevention of pollution by garbage from ships, and this was entered into force on the 31st of December 1988. This annex deals with different types of garbage and specifies the distances from land and the manner in which they may be disposed of. The most important feature of the annex is the complete ban imposed of the disposal into the sea of all forms of plastic. Annex 6 sets out the prevention of air pollution from ships. This was entered into force on the 19th of May 2005. This sets limits on sulfur oxide and nitrogen oxide emissions from ship exhaust and prohibits deliberate emissions of ozone depleting substances. Designated emission control areas set more stringent standards for SOX and NOX and particulate matter. A chapter adopted in 2011 covers mandatory technical and operational energy efficiency measures aimed at reducing greenhouse gas emissions from ships. Air Pollution Conference of 1997. MARPOL is the main international convention covering prevention of operational accidental pollution of the marine environment by ships. The Air Pollution Conference of 1997 adopted new annex regulations for the prevention of air pollution from ships through adding a protocol to MARPOL 7378. This was entered into force in May 2005. The revisions of Annex 6 were adopted in October 2008 and came into force on the 1st of July 2010. Chapter 4 on energy efficiency was adopted in July 2011 and became operational on the 1st of January 2013. The number of contracting states was 87 as of 12th of July 2016. This makes up the combined merchant fleets of which constitute approximately 95.66 of the gross tonnage of the world's merchant fleet. 
Parties to MAP are obliged to implement compulsory Annex 1 and 2 and the optional annexes that they have ratified. A state which has not accepted an optional annex should be under no obligation nor entitled to claim any privileges in respect of matters related to that particular annex. Annex 6 acceptance by acceding to the 1997 protocol. Governments may wish to become parties to MAPO due to marine environmental concerns for waters under their jurisdiction, air quality concerns as they affect populations or land areas under their jurisdiction, benefits to their ship owners, that is worldwide acceptance of their ships, benefits to their ports, means to control pollution, concerns for the worldwide environment. Parties to MARPOL have the obligation not to discharge harmful substances into the sea or to control the discharge of pollutants to the atmosphere. In return, they have the privilege of not being polluted by other parties. If they are, and the pollution occurs within the territorial waters, they can prosecute. A non-party does not accept the obligation to place restrictions upon its ships. And therefore, its ships cannot be prosecuted for failing to comply, except in territorial waters of a party. In this instance, no more favourable treatment should be given. Port states are obliged to impose the conditions of the conventions on parties as well as non-parties. For a non-party, when its own shoreline is polluted or air quality affected, no privilege under MARPOL to insist upon prosecution of the ship concerned is provided. Access to MARPOL and its implementation requires the participation of some or all of the following. Government of the state, the political body having power to conclude international agreements. The administration, legal, administration, maritime, ship owners and port authorities. Each sector needs to know exactly what its institutional rights are, as well as its obligations and responsibilities, the responsibilities of its staff and the requirements to be imposed on ships and ports. MAPO provides a manual on the practical implications of ratifying implementing and enforcing MAPO. The manual provides advice on the process of ratification, implementation and enforcement of the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships 1973 as modified by the Protocol of 1978 relating thereto MAPO 7378. The manual provides an overview of what is covered by the articles, protocols and annexes of the Convention. The manual also gives an overview on the rights and obligations of all stakeholders, the flag state, the port state, the coastal state, the ship owner and to some extent the ship builder. The ITCP is designed to assist developing countries to improve their ability to comply with international rules and standards that relate to maritime safety and the prevention and control of maritime pollution. It gives priority to technical assistance programs that focus on human resources development and institutional capacity building. Activities are mostly delivered through IMO Secretariat and regional outreach mechanisms such as the IMO's regional presence in the field in Africa, Asia and Caribbean, which provide advice to developing countries and executes technical cooperation activities. Regional institutional networks that in partnership with IMO coordinate and manage regional technical assistance programs. The IMO adopts international shipping regulations, but it is the responsibility of governments to implement those regulations. The IMO has developed an integrated technical cooperation program, which is designed to assist governments that lack the technical knowledge and resources needed to operate a shipping industry safely and efficiently. 
Examples of IMO capacity building activities include the following. The preparation of regional strategies for maritime safety, marine environments protection, modernization of maritime legislation, and facilitation of international maritime traffic. Assistance in the development of global search and rescue plans and training of personnel to operate them. Establishment of formal networks or associations for women employed in maritime authorities. Provision of fellowships for specialized on the job maritime training. Development of a program of training model courses to assist with the implementation of the STCW Convention 1978, for example, MC 4.05, Energy Efficient Operation of Ships. IMO Universities and Training Institutes, WMU and IMLI. The IMO Member State Audit Scheme is intended to provide an audited member state with a comprehensive and objective assessment of how effectively it administers and implements those mandatory IMO instruments which are covered by the scheme. The MSC in May 2014 completed the legal framework for the implementation of the mandatory IMO audit scheme with the adoption of amendments to a number of treaties in order to make mandatory the use of the IMO instruments implementation code and auditing of parties to these treaties. Treaties were Solis 1974 as amended, adding a new chapter 13. The International Convention on Standards of Training, Certification and Watchkeeping for Seafarers 1978. The Seafarers Training Certification and Watchkeeping Code. The Protocol of 1988 relating to the International Convention on Load Lines 1996 as amended. It is reasonably expected that the audit scheme will bring about many benefits. These include identifying capacity building activities, for example, the provision of technical assistance by IMO to member states, which would have the greatest effect. The targeting of appropriate action to improve performance would be greatly improved. The member states themselves would receive valuable feedback, which is intended to assist them in improving their own capacity to put their applicable instruments into practice. Generic lessons learned from the audits could be provided to all member states so that benefits could be widely shared. This is a key tool for assessing member states' performance and meeting their obligations and responsibilities as flag, port and coastal states under the relevant IMO treaties. The Voluntary IMO Member State Audit Scheme and the first audits were conducted in 2006. Thank you. This slide completes the current module.